Wasps, Blackie Gloss has stated that Metallica did not become Metallica until about the Injustice for All album. This is the Rock and Roll Weather Man. My name is Sean Morrison. And yes, he was talking to um Eddie Trunk on Trunk Nation on the August 15th episode, which is um of course serious um XM. And um he was asked if he had any idea that Metallica would become as big as they did when his band, when, when the James Hetfield fronted band, of course, which is Metallica, supported Wasp on a U.S. tour in early 1985. He apparently said, honestly, he didn't think anybody had the, abis- the ability to look into a crystal ball and see that. I understand him to a point there. He says he sees things differently. He meets with Metallica. He says Metallica is, um, is, James, is James, meaning James Hetfield. And he doesn't say he's trying to slight the rest of the band, not at all. But being a singer, he can relate to the singer. And even to this day, he he says he listens to how James drives songs that sing a lingo for when we drive a track. That means when we're pushing the crap out of it, we're hitting it hard, using the vocal to carry the track, and the way James drives it, I mean, he had that even then. And then he said just before he came on the air here, there was a commercial for the 80s thing, and the first thing he heard was the late Kevin DeBrow's voice. And he said Kevin was one of the best at driving a track there where there ever was. He means the power that comes out of these guys. He says it's just unrelenting and using a force to be reckoned with. So James had that even then. So like, so like he said, he could see that early on, but predicting what would become of Metallica, he didn't. And he said to be completely honest about it, Metallica didn't become Metallica until about Injustice for All, at least not in the mass sense that we know it now. And Blackie added, did they have a following before that? He goes, of course they did. But to get into where it became supersonic like like it is now, no. And it takes a while for that to happen, and literally the planets are lying for them. He means they have done an Injustice for All, then a Black Island came out, and it's good that after Sandman it, it was on it, man, and... The history is rewritten at that point. So, very interesting points that he does bring up. But, I think Metallica was, did have their popularity on the ground, on, on, um, on, on the right of light, the right of lightning and the kill them all records. And then, of course, of course Master of Puppets was a top 30, was a top 30 album. And I remember them supporting, remember them support, was it Ozzy they were supporting on that album? I don't know. It's been so fucking long. I don't even remember. What was it? Ozzy, the album before. Whatever it was. I'm, I might get, I'm getting Master of Puppets mixed up with Injustice for All. That's what these New York City guys do to me, Blackie. But I know you're from, the, I know you're from Staten Island, Blackie. From, from an area where I grew up. But come on. Don't confuse me, man. Just messing around. Friends, if you're not subscribed to the Show Marks and YouTube channel, please do so. Everyone else has to subscribe. Thank you much for your continued love, honor, and support. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you, Janaki, for mentioning that to me. Okay. And then, apparently, during a VIP experience, question and answer before one of Wasp's concerts on the band's fall tour in 2022. I still can't believe people spent over $300 to speak to this jackass. And I know I call him a jackass sometimes, but it's to spend $350 for a meet and greet. For Q and A, I think it's fucking insanity. He meet to call you a black a jackass either, but <coughs> he apparently spoke about his memories of playing with Metallica on January nineteenth, January thirtieth, nineteen eighty five, at the Sherwood Country Club in Indianapolis, Indiana. He was saying how they got there late, how they had a long drive the night before, cause no sound checks got there for anybody, and they were trying to scramble, willing to make it happen. So they were flip flopping with Metallica every night in that tour. So back that was a co headliner back then. And one night they closed, one night we'd close. And one of the, this happened to be one of the nights they were closed, they were running late. Their dressing was downstairs, it was like a maze down there, no one knew where the hell to go. And apparently, you know, you got that late, you don't know what you're doing, he's in the mirror trying to shave and everything. And then the door flies behind him, there's, there's Cliff, the late Cliff Burton. Stan was based on his intro, started playing, and Cliff's standing right there, he goes, Blackie, how do I get to the stage? He said it twice to him, they're about to go on stage. He said he didn't know, so Blackie. So Cliff literally said, fuck you, man, or something, because he thought he was playing a prank on him. But he honestly wasn't, I don't think. It was one of those weird dressing rooms. So either way, um, 
that was on um that was something that he was talking about on Hair Nation on the on the um actually the Trunk Nation with Eddie Trunk on the Series X seven episode. I don't know if that was the one that, Usually the one on Hair Nation appears on Mondays, but um who knows, maybe it was a replay. Maybe it was maybe he has another version of it. I don't listen to Eddie Trunk twenty four hours a day, so and I own and I mean I own and I have Series X seven, so you know, with all my talking about what he said in the interview, the question is, friends, did Metallica not become Metallica until the End Justice for All album? Or do you feel they um, cemented their status before that? Oh, yeah. Yes, they did have the platinum albums and everything. 1989, I think they became a headliner. Yes, because 1989, I saw them with the Colt, I remember now, in the Meadowlands. And that was a very weird... Yes, that was that was when Hero the Day was out. Or was it before that? Ninety five. Was that the was that the other album, not the black album, there's another album after that, right? Yeah, it was with um, um It's been so long ago, I don't remember. Yeah, oh it was Enter Salmon was like early early ninety one ish. Yeah. But, but it was ninety five Yeah, they did do a lot of touring. I remember seeing him in 92 with Guns N' Roses, but that was another story. They went on before Guns N' Roses. Never again will I go to a, be at a concert at 2.30 in the morning in the stadium. That was a fucking nightmare and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, but anyways, friends, I know I talked a lot about this, but just what do you think about Blackie Wallace's comments about them um, not becoming Metallica until the end of the Sparrow album? And about what you said about the late Cliff Burton, about when you didn't know what the dressing room was. And he got nephew from Cliff Burton. Your thoughts, friends? Shame, shame, shame.